and here they are. You can see Dewey having uh, the time of his life, and actually, right before the match, uh, he came to us and uh, and mentioned that we basically made the, his dream come true, which is always nice. Uh, some players get, you know, very tense playing on stream. Uh, he's having uh, a blast. Yeah, so. I think a very good time. Uh, Ooh. And here, and yeah, we see the one and only Eastern Fusion uh, coming down. Uh, Great card, we have mentioned it, and uh, no spoilers, but in uh, our little uh, <laughs> tournament among the commentators, uh, we might see Eastern Fusion come up in the finals. Let's just say that. <laughs> Not once. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's a bigger spoiler, I guess, but yeah. So, of course, we have mentioned it, uh, Eastern Fusion, uh, just a great, great tool here, as you can see. Pretty much guarantee the Kid Kalos. Uh, the main and I would say most important decision that you have with this deck going first is are you able to set up a, a dweller before or are you gonna just randomly mill your opponent? And here already we see a really strong start. Uh, Diviner of the Herald, one of the tech cards. And you can see here debating uh, am I gonna mill your opponent? And so he is going actually for the mill five. Uh, Wow. And this is really depends also on how you feel like it. Basically, if your strategy is to go for it every time, now is taking the risk. Yeah, and uh, it's actually paying off uh, so much. Uh, bold decision by Dennis, uh, but he gets rewarded with double shufflers, we can say. Great, great. It's uh, what a start. And actually, one of the cards we have not really seen uh, being played, uh, usually. Uh, I think Crime and Suliak were popular, but Metano is actually being there. It's uh, a card we have not really seen. Yeah, I mean, uh, over the last few weeks, uh, we have seen players uh, with like just Suliak yep. and uh, Metano is uh, like even before uh, with uh, when Sprite uh, was like more popular than now. I think uh, uh, the card was not uh, was not picked so much. Still, yeah, I think with these mills. Uh, yeah. You're still far ahead with this. It's definitely an interesting uh, choice. I don't know how big of a fan I am of it, to be fair. But I guess uh, it's working out for him uh, against other matchups. Uh, having this kind of Book of Moon uh, puts in some work. Uh, but for now, we're just going to see some usual setting up. Uh, Dennis, as mentioned, great, great start. Uh, he can set up, uh, obviously, now aware that his opponent is on Thunder Dragon. Yeah. It's not the easiest uh, decision, I guess. Yeah, also because like you don't really know what to expect, honestly. Uh, also, the Chaos Space being there in the graveyard for Dewey yeah. could be useful uh, later on. Absolutely. Uh, but now I think you you would go if you have the chance for Dweller anyways, right? I mean, it's, it's definitely useful against uh, his opponent. Uh, and I'm actually surprised that we haven't seen any of the Bestials from Dewey yet. Uh, it seems... Uh, like, uh, he really got unlucky there with this opening, uh, but uh, at the same time, this is not so, too threatening. Uh, if this is all uh, that Dennis has, uh, I think uh, we might have an interesting game one on our end. Yeah, and I think that's it. So, play is back to do it. Can he make something work and pretty much disrupt this opening from Dennis? I gotta say, not the most threatening, but of course, really annoying nonetheless. Yeah. Let's see if he starts things off maybe with a danger or just to put some pressure on Dennis here. I mean, the Baron uh, is of course pretty good. Uh, usually you manage somehow to put up a Nabis Dweller as well. Uh, this was not the case. Still, the Diviner of the Herald made the difference. Um, and now. here we see the Solar, which Ed really was hoping. Uh, big fan of uh, Battery Man in general, so. What a throwback, honestly, to YCS Milan uh, yeah. <laughs> and a lot of other tournaments uh, with uh, Thunder Dragon uh, pretty much being the best deck back in the day. And now it's up against uh, the actual best deck of the format. Uh, so interesting how Yu-Gi-Oh can develop but still keep these decks relevant, even without, of course, Colossus. Yeah. 
Uh, this is basically how the, the game has evolved. Now basically he's using them as a tool uh, to access his extra deck. Yeah, but a shuffler will be used here by Dennis uh, and here it comes. Uh, definitely, definitely great setup, uh, and you can see just how good these cards are. He's gonna send back uh, Cow Space and the second copy, really annoying, yeah. shutting down the Bestial, which, uh, by the way, it's most likely gonna be the sixth draw, because otherwise we would have seen it on one of the yeah. tier elements. So, kind of an unlucky hit. Yeah, I think also this was very unfortunate that Dewey didn't draw any of the yeah. three offs of his Bestials. He's playing nine, so. Gonna take a look at his opponent graveyard. There is yet another one in the form of Mudora. So this is uh, not an easy way out. Uh, as mentioned, the Keldo was able to shut things off. Uh, they're really, really good cards. Yeah. But here we have another copy of Cow Space. Uh, he's gonna discard a card and then uh, his opponent uh, could potentially negate, and he does. So he activates the Baron to shut it down and Dewey already smiling, uh, not feeling the best about his chances, but he goes for the Melody with the Danger Nessie, wow. This is actually gonna be able to add three cards from the deck with the Levian here, so this is still far from over. Great stuff. Because I think you have to negate uh, the Chaos Space no matter what, right? Yeah, I mean, probably, yeah. I guess, yeah. And here we see not only the Levian here, but one of the past YCS prize card in the form of Chaos Emperor. What a card. And now with the Levian here, uh, I think you force... Yeah, uh, but I think you have to use the, the Mudora. Yeah, you have to. If your opponent yeah. is able to resolve, you have to consider it. And he doesn't, doesn't go for uh, it. Wow. I thought Dennis was going to use right away the Mudora, and I think... This is a big punish. Uh, very surprised by this play from Dennis. Uh, but he has, okay. the he has the arrow of the orange light. Okay. Still, I would have liked uh, the Mudora right away. I have to. Yeah, be I mean, I think uh, I think you activate the Mudora and then you prevent basically do his play and you keep the arrow for something yeah. else, right? Still. No, still uh, really strong. Opening by Dennis. Okay, wow. Ooh. But Wyvern Buster are drawn, so this is still. Uh, you can see how many plays uh, Dewey has available. It's really an interesting deck, as the Bestials in his deck are not just uh, uh, interruption during your opponent turns, but they trigger your own Thunder Dragons. And here you can get a draw off the Cow Space if you want. And I think this is very good because basically he had drew the, the Wyvern Buster and then basically yeah. the Chaos Space was not super needed. It was a bait. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Dennis took it. So let's see. As the Striker Dragon, uh, why not? You really want to fill the graveyard with uh, Light and Dark in this deck. And I think Dennis is now considering the Mudora on the Chaos Space, uh, which is way too late. And he actually goes for the Wyvern Buster. Which, by the way, is it's actually bad for him because, I mean, yeah, sure, now you shut him down, but then the Call Up Serpent is able to add yeah. it back. So I'm not sure if I'm following Danny's uh, line of thought at the moment, uh, but of course, great opening and still has a lot of chances to take this game one. So yeah, Dewey now resolving, gonna add the Call Up Serpent. Uh, we have seen this again multiple times throughout the years. Uh, a really strong engine for not only Thunder Dragon, but Dragon Link. Dragon Link, Link yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I think over the last two years at least, uh, for these cards sure. have been played, so. Still here, I mean, they're super powerful. They can be splashed basically in this kind of decks that rely on Link summons. And now, as mentioned, uh, the Mudora uh, would have been much better afterwards because he can go for a Link Chu, which is the Dark, great. And then he special summons the Collab and can use the Dark, uh, which can be shut down by Rulkalos, but then he adds back something. So this is what's going on here. Activate Rulkalos and then Dark will resolve, so. Interesting uh, line, I think.
Let's see what he decides to get. Uh, he has a lot of different options available. Of course, uh, it has to have 1500 or less defense. Uh, And by the way, I think I'm just realizing that he forgot to activate the SC. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't think he had it of it. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, just got the Lebion here with the Gauss Emperor. Yeah, because he resolved the melody, but then he didn't really get to the danger. And now we'll see. The other effect of Chaos Emperor, not only can you summon it, but you can use it as a skill to get back a Banished Dragon. This is what's gonna happen here by paying 1000 life points. Uh, you get back uh, maybe even the Levian here if he wants. Uh, he has a few considerations. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, having the danger here uh, would have been, uh, let's say, a plus one. Yeah, uh, actually a quite relevant uh, one. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, it has to be the Levia. But uh, in the very end, okay, yeah. yeah. After uh, a long consideration, he does take the Levia near back, uh, which is uh, really good for next turn, at least if he wants to feel like that. Now we see the Collapse Serpent, uh, and let's see if he has another play. Otherwise, this could be very anti climax and he does so 50 50 roll with the danger bigfoot i think yeah work case scenario you can just use it to get rid of one of them what does he eat okay it is the levian here so bigfoot is special summon to the field getting him another card I'm wondering uh, what he could do. Uh, looking at his extra deck, um, he's considering just crashing. Uh, you can see big debate here, and I think this would be a little bit of a mistake if he just goes for this, because then it would have been the same to use the other effect. So what he could have done instead was uh, activate the Bigfoot when he didn't have a card in his hand and then guarantee the Levianier to stick, which I think is yeah. on average much better than any other top deck. But play is back to Dennis, uh, who is now in control. And yeah, this wow. uh, will be a lot. Uh, and I think uh, Dewey picked up his card. So game one goes to Dennis. Pretty brutal game one, I want to say. Uh, at the very end, uh, Dai uh, was quite uh, unlucky with his pickups. We mentioned he's playing uh, 12 Bestials. Uh, he didn't pick up uh, any of the relevant one going second. And actually, the sixth card was a Bestial, yeah. which made it even worse. But uh, kudos to his opponent. Uh, he kept his uh, calm and he just performed this combo, which uh, I got to say, was a little risky, I think, without knowing what your opponent is playing, going right away before the Dweller into a mill 5. Uh, yeah, it's risky. If yeah. it's a mirror match, you can get punished exactly. heavily. Yep. Uh, but at the very end, uh, with the Herald of the Orange Light in hand, uh, he was able to shut things off uh, from his opponent. Uh, I'm still, gotta say, a little bit skeptic on the way Mudora was played there, because I think if he prevented the Levian here, which he knew about, of course, that could have changed things. Uh, at the same time, Bo, his opponent also didn't activate uh, the Nessie when it was discarded by Melody. So both players, uh, obviously, true and all. So they gotta know what they are doing. Uh, but playing on stage uh, can be nerve-wracking for anyone. Uh, we just had the demonstration when we played against the <laughs> in our little September 2011 future match. Uh, and we'll have an even better demonstration where we get to see Leonard in action later on. But uh, I don't think he has heard of me <laughs> while in the crowd. So luckily for me, yeah. Or we'll lucky for him. <laughs> probably, to be fair. I mean, we'll see what happens and we'll see who advances to the commentator's final. So 
Regardless, now we can take a quick look at the side decks. What do you think uh, Dewey is gonna do now that he probably goes first? Yeah, he goes first. The Cold Body Grave uh, is gonna go in. I think yep. it's a very good card going first in general and uh, also as uh, Ghost Bell. Uh, I like it a lot. Yeah, I think it's a good one. I think it's, yeah. I think it's the, if the most better hand trap of this format. It, it probably is uh, along with the bestials. I uh, think, uh, as mentioned, yeah, I really would have liked uh, to see some players using multiple bestials and ghost spell in the main deck for the mirror match. So definitely, those are coming in. Also, because they stop your opponent uh, bestials, yeah. so they can be really, really good. Yeah. While on the other hand, then is of course uh, uh, probably not prepared too much for this matchup. But his side deck is really good. He has uh, Ash. Draw and lock uh, evenly, super polymerizations, uh, old card that can be sided for this matchup, but you gotta know what you're doing. So if he hasn't really tested against his opponent deck, maybe he doesn't know what to side in. Regardless, I think our players are now pretty much ready for game two, so let's go back to them. And here they are, so as mentioned, Dai probably wants to go first. The setup is Bestial Lubellion, which is really the best combo in the deck by itself. Let's see if he can pull it off. I see a Collapse Serpent, maybe a Danger. Sushinoko. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and he's one. probably yeah. gonna go for the Tsuchinoko right away. Let's see what this Dairo eats. Yeah, probably one die is, is enough <laughs> in this case. Yeah. This is gonna be quite relevant. What does it eat? Uh, it's the Collapse Serpent, which is a pretty good hit, by the way. But at least he gets to pick up a card again looking for the bestial lubellion let's see if he finds it uh, even melody would be a really nice one here cow space uh, all of them uh, and he does have the melody Ooh, so okay. is there an ash blossom from his opponent uh, no so do if fan gonna be happy die fan are gonna be happy let's see he picks up levian here he discarded uh, the abolos the abolos uh, so really a big throwback here but this still looks a little fragile to me he needs to pick up uh, either a line monster or a way to get things going i think also having discarded the call up serpent makes the difference because uh, yeah that, that would have been very good uh, now with this, yeah, he also has the Ooh, Cipher. Yeah. But this is the card he was looking for. He didn't really have much going on at the moment, but the last card was the Cipher. Is there a response though? There is the Avnis. So let's check this mills out. Uh, okay, does it a Tirlma, but might not be enough. Uh, of course, still better than nothing, which is all that Dennis was hoping for. And here, finally, we get to see the Lubellion. This is such a great card in this deck. It does so much. Yeah. Basically, you send it from the end, and you add any bestials. And then you can easily summon it back from the graveyard, set up the branded beast. Uh, it's such a strong card here. Yeah, I think this is what really Dewey tries to make uh, every time he has oh, the wow, chance. Oh, wow, interesting. Uh, he okay. gets the scream. Uh, so he's not really interested in going for maybe a Stapelia or a more aggressive play, but instead sets up a screen for next turn. Definitely not an obvious line here. Because, like, you think he's going to expect... Uh... Yeah, because now we, we see the Lubellion, but... Yeah, I mean, he's taking it uh, really slow. And now, as mentioned, we get to see the combo I was talking about. Uh, great stuff. You get a Bestials, uh, you set up for next turn, which is always good. We know how good Bestials are against Ishizu tier elements. And then uh, you get to set up uh, pretty much the branded Beast. Uh, 
if you want, which is a great trap card, potentially. I mean, I really like the idea of Dewey's, you know, splashing the bestials yeah. inside this. Uh, I also like it a lot uh, here. We see getting rid of the Collapse Serpent, uh, pretty much a setup in case he gets to the Cow Space uh, or he gets, uh, uh, you know, milled uh, by his opponent, uh, who, by the way, opened Eastern Fusion again. <laughs> so, yeah, great stuff uh, here again. Really good opening. We see the Diabolos, uh, which was a great discard. Uh, we haven't seen in a while honestly yeah it has been <laughs> so long uh, again the very first versions of dragon link were using it but now he gets rid of a card uh, from uh, his opponent and uh, we well, think put it on top right yeah so his hand must be incredible i guess and now we get to see once again the really cool interaction with the cow emperor getting back the call up serpent uh, he could have gone for a levian here but instead, uh, thought that it was going to be better for him to get the call up. And this is uh, a very strong start. Yeah, because now I think he wants to, you want, you really want to go for the Saryuja with this deck in order to draw cars. But uh, yeah, having the Diabolos on the field also, I think. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's a lot. Uh, you can see maybe. he's considering his plays. Uh, he wants to get rid of the Cypher to set up a uh, Lightning Grave. But he has both uh, the Dengirsu and uh, I think uh, number 38 in the extra deck. Yeah. So, as you can see here, we do get to the Branded Beast. Uh, really strong card, uh, essentially able to get rid of a card during each player's turn. By simply tributing a Dragon Monster. So. Really, really strong card. And now he goes for a Link Summon. Interesting. So he might go for Euratic Spheres. Yeah, Euratic Sphere comes down. Now he finally has a Lightning Grave uh, for the Call Up Serpent. Uh, is he playing uh, the Guard Dragon package? Uh, probably the Beastie, right? Yeah. Okay, he does. So we could see a PST potentially, and uh, yeah, for now he will just go for call up. Especially because, like, I think the Diabolos is not easy to get rid of yeah, in general, sure. and the with the seal also um, he have a good protection. Now I think he's going for the PST. Yep. He could go for the PST afterwards, uh, like the Striker Dragon plus PST, and he does. So PST, it's the field. Uh, he will now get to the Wyvern Buster. He can go for Striker Dragon and set up another play where he goes for maybe a rank eight uh, alongside uh, uh, another rank four play. What does he have? Uh, Apollosa access code. Uh, of course, he needs to go into a dragon first, but then he's good to go. And surprisingly enough, I think he is playing uh, the old uh, Euratic uh, <laughs> Atum, uh, the original one. Yeah, which is something we have not seen in a while. But I mean, it makes sense with all the bestials he's playing. And look at this. So he goes for the triple dark Levianir, which basically means. Uh, with Diabolos and Levianir, he got rid of two cards from your opponent end. So, great stuff. Yeah. Third, yeah, gets rid of a card and uh, will now be able to continue off uh, his combos, uh, potentially going for the Wyvern Buster, as mentioned, into the Striker. Then he gets something back with Pisti. And uh, it's already one of the best openings we have seen this weekend, yeah. to be fair. Also because I think Dennis was not expecting this to come because he put on top out of the Diabolos uh, one of his cards, which means that he had a really good hand. Mm -hmm. uh, now I think with this setup you have the seal you know, to bounce back one, also the branded beast. Um, 
This is very good stuff from Dui. For sure. We always uh, just try and comment on uh, these players who bring uh, maybe underrated decks, we could say, and sometimes they work out really well. And yeah. here comes down the School Dread Saruya, only with free materials, I believe. Yeah. Which uh, I'm not too sure why this line uh, was chosen. You can see Dai maybe shaking his head a little bit, but yeah. This might have been a little too fast, uh, not too happy with his play. We were just uh, saying how well he played up until this point, uh, but yeah, now he has the Wyvern in his hand. Uh, he has not reused the Pisti, so yeah. Unfortunately, a little bit of uh, nerves, but at least the Brotor is, uh, is a good pickup here. Yeah, he gets to use it. Uh, yeah, I think it's just... Um, yeah, you can see him smiling a little bit. <laughs> and uh, by the way, he has to uh, resolve another bestial, which by the way still means that this is a lot. Because uh, you can see this die is smiling uh, uh, about his play. But to be fair, I think this is still really good. Uh, not what he hoped for, but he has a Mascarena plus uh, two bestials and uh, the branded beast so it's still a pretty good uh, pretty good setup so wait yeah he cannot go for the mascherena of course because you cannot summon it with a link which means either he goes for dark to get back uh, one of his opponent bestials, but or he can go for the Mascherena using uh, Levian here, for example. Yeah, I think he was pretty sure of summoning the Zaryuja with four monsters. Yeah, yeah that was the. I yeah, he thought plan. that he used four materials. Yeah. Uh, it was three, unfortunately, and now yeah, he's gonna commit to a play, maybe a dark, uh, not the greatest. Uh, uh, which, by the way, he could have gone for a pretty sick play here if he added a different bestial. He could have gone for the Atom, which we were talking about, so... Nonetheless, you gotta keep your calm and try your best. Yeah, and now he goes for the Chaos Emperor. Able to access a rank 8 play if he feels like it. And I think he just entered the end phase. No, okay, yeah. yeah. The judge reminded him maybe of his end phase add. He's gonna go for the 38. In the end phase, he gets a search. So maybe a little sloppier than we would have expected it. But Dai keeping his nerves down and still ending on a very, very good opening with two cards sent back from his opponent and a threatening field. So let's see if Dennis is able to fight back with is and uh, I do see the scream. Uh, we could see the 38. Honestly, I don't see a reason why you wouldn't, uh, except if you want to play around talent. Uh, but there are not many spells in this deck, uh, so you might as well just take it. Uh, but I don't think he did, uh, or maybe he chained to the 38. And he eats uh, a merely chaining to the 38. Uh, here, we most likely gonna see the bestial come down from die. Let's see. I think it makes sense to, to for do it sure. now. So. He goes uh, for the Bestial, as expected, uh, which now will activate his effect and getting another one for next turn. But again, the Diviner, let's see if he wants to use the Branded Beast uh, here. This uh, is actually a close one. Because the problem is the Kid Kalos is still there, so I think you are forced to use it uh, here. But he does not. not. Uh, wow. Oh, okay. He's gonna resolve the Diviner, gonna mill five from both. Uh, what is he gonna hit? Uh, let's see. 
Let's see these mills. The Merli was already used, but yes, five more with the Kelbeck plus the Avnis. So this is getting out of hand real quick from Dennis. Uh, huge, huge hits. And yeah, here we see another bestial, but another five mills from both decks. We cannot quite see them. I think the Shireen would be, and it's the third name. Wow. He hits the Keldo, the Shireen, yeah. and the Mudora as well. He hits all of the names plus Mudora and Keldo. These mills are incredible from Dennis. Uh, all that he needed. And I mean, this deck is the most represented for a reason this weekend. And this is uh, where the madness begins, basically. Because now I think Dennis. Uh, can potentially come back. Uh, for sure, he has access to so much, and uh, you can see here why the Diviner is still considered by many a really strong uh, normal summon option. Uh, even if you just send it off the top of the deck, it's so good to get back with Elf and end on a Baron. Yeah, it gives you, I think, an additional uh, you know, way to get things started. Uh, and with the Agido in this kind of matchup, yeah. uh, you really want to mill five. For sure. And here we get to see the Shireen resolving, I think, into the Mud Dragon. Which is great because, by the way, it prevents the Branded Beast from targeting his monsters once the Mud Dragon resolves. At the moment, it's one of the last. Uh, spots in which he wouldn't. Uh, let's see what the next line is. Uh, of course, uh, we might see a uh, Kit Kalos, uh, but uh, by the way, all three tier elements uh, that Fusion Summon were used. Mm -hmm. So this actually limits quite a bit the possible plays that Dennis has access to. And I'm really surprised that he picked uh, Mad Dragon as his last Fusion Summon for the turn. It was like the sooner you put it on the field, uh, yeah. the better to prevent uh, the branded beast being activated. But uh, I think uh, the goal here is to go for a baron soon. So if he does end up with a baron, uh, that's really good because number 38, by the way, has a, how we like to call it, secret effect, <laughs> which is the redirecting of attacks. So, which is relevant, I think, also in this spot. Yeah, both were used uh, correctly, so... Now, let's see, as mentioned, uh, the problem is if you go for the Baron, you have to use the Mad Dragon. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you really want to commit it to, but... Uh... Because now he really needs, needs to get rid of, uh, I mean, uh, do his field is still impressive. Uh, he just wants to make sure that the, about the beast, let's see if, uh, yeah, now all the chains have been resolved. Yeah, gonna take a little bit of time here to consider his options. Uh, and at the very end, uh, I think, uh, the beast was used right away. Yeah. But really interesting target there because now you get to use uh, the bestial effect to get rid of the diviner possibly. Wow. I think maybe Mud Dragon was used uh, as uh, Calling light to prevent the Viner. That's my only guess. Because we obviously can't quite tell what they're saying. But now I think he wanted to activate the Diabolos. Uh, but unfortunately, by having uh, you summon it on the fence, we get to see the five meals. As mentioned, uh, all the relevant tiers were already used. So he can just get to that. But the Baron is still an option. Yeah, the Baron is an option. And now with the Sadiq, he gets to search the Rhino Heart. 
I'm still not super convinced that he can. Because, uh, like, I'm thinking about that Mad Dragon even before uh, summoning it in that specific spot. Still, now, yeah, he has to use the Shireen. Uh, and then let's see what he mails. Nothing too relevant, uh, all effects were already used, uh, but now he will be able to make uh, the Baron, as mentioned, uh, which is such a strong card, he can pop the number 38 and he will do so, which means uh, now the Scream is sent to the graveyard. But he picks up his cards! Uh, Wow, so surprisingly enough, he had, probably due to how much time was left in the round, he picked up his cards uh, and uh, yeah, we are going to the next. Really interesting game, I gotta say, <laughs> the opening from Dai was what we expected originally from the deck. So definitely what we have seen, although he was cut off uh, from uh, some of the Thunder Dragons, uh, we saw an Avnis from his opponent, yep. which is always scary. It actually, it's uh, just a tier lemon uh, name. And once again, there was no bestial uh, uh, that could be activated uh, right away. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, the opening was impressive. No, I, think, I think he opened things off very well yep. in general. Uh, with that Saryuja, I think he had in top of my mind drawing and then putting cards back. Yeah. Still, I think he was able to come back into the game because also he had another bestial in his hand. And I think For this sure. is what really made the difference, like playing all of them in the main deck. Uh, uh, as we have discussed before, I think it's very useful because basically you can get rid of, uh, of uh, tournament monsters in your opponent's graveyard. And I think also with the Bestial Lubellion uh, setup uh, with yeah. the branded beast that made the difference. Absolutely. What we mentioned is the Bestials are great uh, going into this event, but uh, Dai just took it a step forward and turned it into not only a disruptive engine, but a comboing engine as well. So when he goes second, he has access to them as uh, entraps to just stop your opponent. But when he goes first, not only are they really good alongside Thunder Dragons to trigger them, but as we saw here, he banished some monsters from his graveyard, got them back with Chaos Emperor, and uh, with Levianir plus Diabolos, uh, on top of his combo, he got rid of two cards from his opponent's hand. So, great stuff by both. Uh, but with around eight minutes remaining on the clock, uh, our duelists are ready for game three. Let's find out who will be the winner of round three. And here they are, ready to fight for an undefeated record in round three. Both duelists duo. Only one of them will be able to stay in this with a clean record. And I do see a super polymerization Ooh. for Dennis, uh, which also, can be really, really strong. With the Diviner once again. We are going to the <laughs> casino. <laughs> I think uh, we are getting these five mils off. Uh, are they going to be as good as they were in the previous uh, games? Uh, let's find out. Oh, and it's going to be a mil 10 uh, right away wow. with the Merli. Wow. Eating the jackpot there from Dennis. Uh, but uh, at least uh, Saronir will uh, keep things in check. Let's see these next five uh, looking for a tears, but he misses. He kind of a whiff, kind of a whiff here, getting the Keldo, but nothing too relevant outside of it. Is that gonna be the end of the play from Dennis, or does he have something else? He does have the Magma, which is uh, pretty relevant. Can we check what? Uh, Rank 6 uh, is playing uh, maybe the Beatrice. Uh. Yeah, it's playing the Beatrice. Yeah, which which basically is one of the most popular one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't get to see any name uh, out of the 10 mils basically, rather than the Merli, which is unfortunate on one hand. Something that you don't really see often, like usually you get to see at least another one. 
And I think we might see a second from Dai at the very last second. He whiffs. He decides not to go for it. And we do see the Beatrice coming down in attack position. Wow. Fiera, <laughs> we could say. Yeah. Goes for uh, activate the effects. Uh, probably going to send another name. It's the Sherin. Uh, are we going to see another bestial from Dai? And Ooh, uh, we bell. see the ghost bell. Okay. Nice. Keeping uh, things uh, in check uh, for his opponent. Uh, <laughs> you can see him looking at the camera, looking at the crowd. That is getting uh, bigger and bigger. But I think, again, I might have been a fan of using it right away. Now we get to see Amudora. Just setting up even more disruptions from the graveyard. Gonna set one card face down, which we know what that is very well. But... Does he have any cards in his hand? No, he doesn't, right? I think he does not have any cards back in his hand. Wow. Now he is activating the Keldo. Yeah, he has double Keldo, double Mudora. But what I'm wondering is why don't you just keep uh, it in your hand uh, and he sends back the sphere mode uh, alongside uh, some other targets that could be useful in the graveyard. Uh, I am a little concerned about that super polymerization. Of course, he can get to a card in his hand, but he needs to resolve the Beatrice. And now he's gonna go and add a dragon for the super polymerization, which is the Druid Swarm. Solid opening. Uh, do you think Beatrice in attack mode? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's my sense? only concern. That's my only yeah. concern. I mean, with I four minutes on the clock, uh, Beatrice in attack mode, a little threatening, but I don't know. Uh, he's gonna come down uh, to the wire once again, uh, but again, what a card Super Poly is. Yeah, I mean, uh, we have seen it in action multiple times, uh, shutting things off uh, so often. Uh, uh, now it's back to Dewey, which uh, honestly, um, he's, got, he's starting things yeah, start off. Start things again. off uh, with the melody. Not the best when you are playing against the both Keldo and Mudora. And here he discards the other branded card he's playing in his deck, which is one of the most unique ones uh, branded regained. But yeah, Melody gets uh, significantly worse when your opponent can shuffle back six cards. And he does not even have a second target for it, it seems. Wow. This is very unfortunate. Okay. Yeah, this could be an unfortunate yeah. one. Yeah. Well, it's true that there's the super polymerization, but if he finds the way to deal damage over the Beatrice... That would be a shock uh, to yeah. me. I think with Super Polymerization, Keldo, Mudora and Beatrice, uh, it is Dennis who is in control. Uh, and I see another Beast uh, and maybe the Ock could be the card. Maybe no, it's the Levian here, right? Because it didn't add the... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. could be, right? Or That's another it. Yeah, Levian here is in the end for mm -hmm. sure. But this is where I don't understand why we're not using these Keldos and Mudora. What? Uh, I don't know. This decision might cost him a lot because uh, he had the six uh, shufflers back and he just didn't go for them. Well, so now we see the Levian here. And if he actually the effect, the super polymerization might come down. Uh, is he using it? Uh, he might not use it and just try and push for damage. Let's see. Are we going to see it uh, right away? I don't think he's discarding it. So maybe he gets to the battle phase. He attacks yeah. and we'll see the super polymerization coming down. And there it is. Super polymerization from Dennis clearing the whole field. Wow. Such a good card in this yeah. spot. 
Uh, this is what I really needed uh, because, like, apart from that, uh, Dewey was able to stop him even before. And now, uh, with yep. just two minutes on the clock, it's gonna be tough. Uh, it might end up being a draw. And now, again, Dennis has to consider using his Mudora and Keldo, and he finally does activating the Mudora. But is there gonna be enough time? So he shuffles back some of his opponent cards, and I think Dai, looking at the crowd, knows that this one might just be over in a blink of an eye. But again, I really don't get why you're, we are not just sending all of the darkened lights back from the graveyard. Yeah, at least you are guaranteed uh, yeah. no more plays from your opponent. By the way, there is one minute of extra time uh, as opposed to what we are seeing on the clock. So about two minutes left, which gives Dennis uh, significant chances of victory, I would say. Do you think the Beatrice in attack was just a bait for the Super Poly then? But I mean, in general, uh, I will prevent uh, any having any other issue. Yeah, I will just put it in her in defense and uh, I mean, I understand that having Super Poly, of course, puts you far ahead and like being on the safer side, let's say, but uh, yeah. in general, I would summon her in defense. It seems yeah. uh, as if uh, he's pretty much shut down from his plays, uh, gonna activate maybe the Druid Swarm, I think. Uh, and uh, yeah, Keldo gonna be chained, uh, just sending back uh, the remaining uh, Light and Dark monsters in the graveyards. Uh, and uh, this is making things a lot more complicated. Uh, Dennis is guaranteed to be able to push damage. And yeah, I think uh, when there is about a minute left on the clock, uh, it will come down to this damage uh, from Dennis. Again, one minute remaining. I think he's almost done with his turn uh, and time uh, is actually cold, uh, I thought. We had another minute. Yeah. yeah. As expected, the time gets cold, and at the very end, both duelists remain undefeated. So. Let's go back to us uh, for the post-match discussion. What a match it was. Uh, it really came down to the wire. Both duelists fighting with all they had uh, to stay undefeated. Uh, we mentioned one of them was not going to remain undefeated. Uh, Instead. <laughs> Instead, both found a way and it was a draw. So both uh, duelists remaining with a very solid score of two wins and one draw. Great chances of making it to the top 64 tomorrow. But regardless, uh, I think a uh, really interesting match. Uh, we saw again uh, the Bestial Engine uh, being played at its fullest. Uh, and I think that was really a good show for both players. Uh, maybe, just maybe, uh, the consideration with uh, the Bell uh, was something that I had in mind. Uh, so when the end was looking a little shaky from Dennis in Game 3, and we saw a level six diviner on the field and a bestial. I really would have liked the bell uh, to come down there. Because yeah. if you stop it, uh, then you're basically having a really good chance that your opponent just ends their turn. Yeah. You attack over and you win the game and the match. So maybe that's the only consideration. Because if you don't, you know they are going to make at least a Beatrice. And that means you, they have not only a play that you're forced to stop uh, during uh, Danny's turn, but then another play during your own turn, which you're also forced to stop. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, though, again, another surprise is that we... I was thinking uh, at the very end there, with the Beatrice on the field, that we might have seen a scatter shot, but Dennis not. Yeah. is not playing any cards uh, uh, of that kind, which uh, means at the very end, I think it was deserved that they both uh, fought well and uh, deserved to just end up uh, in a draw. Yeah. Uh, so I guess, uh, as a final reminder, I don't know, are you convinced by this Thunder Dragon deck? Do you think it, it has what it takes to beat uh, Tier Elements? I mean, in general, I think Dewey's deck is uh, centered on uh, Bestials, and uh, I think his strategy is pretty 
is pretty straightforward in the sense that uh, I'm playing nine of them. So all the good ones, like all, all the ones that I have, I want to play them. And also in the side deck, I have two ghost builds. So like if I play against the Shizu Tirlements, I have 11 cards. So basically, let's say most most of the times my opponent is not going to fusion summon. Yep. Uh, I'm convinced the deck is very good, especially with, like, with the Branded Beast setup. Uh, it's very good uh, also with the Link Summons interactions that the deck can have. Uh, it was a very nice one. So also with the side deck, I'm very convinced about the Ghost Bells. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, uh, as you mentioned, uh, some of these players this weekend have been prioritizing uh, shutting your opponent off. But it seems that compared to other formats, there aren't really some, uh, uh, you know, outside of Abyss Dweller maybe, which not all decks can use, it seems like they're just grinding. Yeah. So if that's the case, then uh, it, it seems as if uh, the deck from Dai can do that significantly well. Uh, the Branded Beast probably being the best card. Because also your opponent doesn't really want to keep, uh, you know, Cosmic Twin Twister in their deck, and then you're forcing them to deal with this interruption, which is on both uh, on both turns. So that's definitely something to work for. But on the other hand, do you think Dennis has other plays maybe different that he could have gone for? Uh, looking back at the game, uh, like. I think the Beatrice on attack position uh, was was our concern actually because like it's true that they had the super polymerization to prevent his opponent to yep. basically make his moves, but still I will summon the Beatrice in defense. You will never know, like three minutes left on the time. Absolutely. But, still. but maybe we can ask them directly now with you guys. So thank you for being with us. Uh, it was been a pleasure. We'll see you quick in round four. But before we do that, let's go to Ed for a little quiz. Hello, guys. Yes, I will say this is a first for me because we're going to have to do a two-player interview. I very confidently said at the start of this round that one of these people will be taking their first loss. Not so. We ended up in a draw, which is quite interesting. So how do you feel about a draw, Dennis? Uh, it was not good. So I have more misplays uh, done and uh, it was not uh, very, very yet. Yeah. So we i look to the next games and i hope so it's better <laughs> well that's the confident approach that you've got to take what did you think about going up against a bestial thunder dragon deck how was that for you so it's okay but it's uh so it was only easy to play with, with the ishizos but uh yeah i must uh, miss the ishizos that's that's that's, that's, that's a problem because it's one of the decks, like those Bestials at a couple of points stopped a couple of plays, but you managed to play around everything. So we're going to go through the sort of play-by-plays I've written down here. So in game one, you built a very strong field. Dewey didn't activate a Nessie off Melody, so that there were a couple of moments that just didn't really work out for Dewey, so that's why he ended up scooping. You really controlled that game. Were you pretty level-headed throughout all that? Yeah, I have uh, the one game, we, I have more, more on the board, but uh, yeah. <laughs> First time feature match and uh, yeah, it's a uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> That's fair. So let's still look at game two. So there was quite a lot. Dewey was working hard to get to Lebellion and stuff, and then into the spheres, into Sariuja with only three materials. So that was a little bit of a mistake. So there was lots of moments where it looked like you were possibly going to win this because there were some misplays there. But then you sort of had to sit and wait, although you did get the Havness off. And then Dewey stopped Marley with the, or Merley, sorry, with the Bistials. Do you reckon that was something that, did that stop you, do you think, getting the Merley stopped? Uh, no. My, so it was a mistake. So I want to uh, go uh, Babuska or Baroness. So, but she has... Uh, um, uh, number uh, 34 i don't know so uh, when i uh, run in with babuska for choice it's not uh, confirmed so i i want to go the baroness but uh, it was not enough no, and then in that final one it was sort of a a little bit of a battle of attrition where it looked like you were in control for most of it you had that great moment with super poly and then yeah. it all came down to the wire the time is running <laughs> ah. you disappointed uh, no. You can't be disappointed. You did well. You performed admirably in the okay. feature match. So congratulations. Sorry you didn't get the win, but a draw is still its better than a loss, I'd yeah, say, in some way. Sure. So, Dennis, congratulations. I'm going to bring in Dewey right now. So thank you very much. Best of luck in your next games. Dewey, come on in. Yes, you're a bundle of energy that we look forward to in these interviews. So 
How do you feel with a draw? Honestly, I gotta admit, I play horribly normally. I don't play much better, but the nerves really got to me game two, all through that. So I'm very happy with a draw, personally, but we should always play to win, of course. I suppose that is true. If you want to get to the top of YCS, you do have to play to win. Let's talk about some of the nerves and the misplays, because there were a couple of things. You didn't activate Nessie off Melody in game one. Why was that? Was that just forgetting? I was just forgetting. I, mentally, this game was already written off. <laughs> I'll be honest. Like, I saw what he milled, and then he shuffled back. Nah, you can't do that. Fair enough. So then let's talk about game two. You worked pretty hard to get into Lebellion. You built a very strong field, very good start into Hieretic Spheres, and then you jumped into the three material Sariuja. Yeah, no, no, is that just me? I'm maybe the only one who noticed yeah. that. So talk to us about what you were thinking at that moment. That moment, I thought my world was going down. I was, I don't know, I was just a nurse. I'm sorry for everybody, uh, but I, I recovered okay-ish. Still won the game, but yeah. If I had played it correctly, that would have been the most beautiful Thunder Dragon play ever. David Urban would have been very, very, very happy. And Robin, sorry, I don't know your last name, but you would have been also very happy. Don't crucify me now. Okay, just come a little closer to me so you aren't jumping out of frame. You're so energetic that you're just going to keep bouncing in and out of the camera. Then let's just quickly talk about the last one because there were a couple of moments. You actually managed to hit Dennis with the ghost bell at one point, which I think you were very confident that that was going to stop a couple of plays. It just came down to playing to time. There was an unfortunate situation with Melody. Dennis was kind of in control. There was that super poly. Were you actually kind of glad that it came down to time in those final moments because it could have ended up looking yeah, a bit worse? Yeah, uh, like when you uh, flip the super poly, I was like, oh my god, I'm going to lose this. Um, super poly was very clutch, so I would have won maybe in time. If he hadn't had a Super Poly, but, well. So would you take the draw over the loss from Super Poly? Obviously, obviously. Okay, so well, there we go. So congratulations on getting, I think, our first draw that at least I've been a part of since we've started coverage. So this is the first dual Not interview I've ever thing. had. Not a good thing. <laughs> well, either way, I best of luck. Question. I had time question. Don't worry. I had to sign in this Agave Dragon. Wasn't that great, because I didn't have the bodies, but all good. Plus, all good. I'm very happy to be here. I'm, you're going to see me next time again. And I'm going to win. Keep an eye out for Dewey then. You're probably going to win. Thanks very much, Dewey. Well, this is going to be exciting to see what happens in the upcoming games. Stick around because we've got round four coming up as soon as we can get it to you. Don't go anywhere.